Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2002 body-swapping comedy, The Hot Chick, with our guest, Amber. Welcome, Amber. Hi. Thanks for having me again. We're so excited that you're here. Amber and I, if you haven't listened to our Space Jam episode in season one, you should go back and do that. And also pause and listen to an interview from earlier this week. But Amber and I were co-teachers. We became work wives and totally excellent friends. And (laughs) (laughs) this was one of our movies that especially on really rough days working with special education kids in a public school setting, we would kind of lose our minds and just start shouting April to one another (laughs) and quoting this movie. So we knew when the 20th anniversary was approaching for the hot chick that Amber needed to be the guest. And I'm really sorry in advance, Danielle, there's going to be a lot of quoting happening during this. I mentally prepared myself. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) (laughs) But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here are a few ways that you can. Did you know that writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And if you like what you hear and want to buy us a virtual cup of coffee, and I realized after doing this for a few episodes, maybe people thought like you were actually buying us a cup of coffee. That's not what it is. It's called K-O-F-I, which is pronounced coffee, but really like it's a one-time donation. Just wanted to clear that up. Educate the listeners. Yes. (laughs) Really all Jackie is saying is get them dollar bills, (laughs) y'all. We know Patreon and doing a subscription can be a daunting endeavor, but if you just want to throw us a couple of bucks because we work hard and we kind of make you laugh sometimes, head over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. And if you're looking to support us in other ways, don't forget to check out our Redbubble page to buy some of our merch at no more late fees dot redbubble dot com. And at the beginning of the year, which is around the corner, we'll be dropping some new merch, different designs, things we have said and made us laugh. And so we had an artist, Anna, work with us to drop some designs. They're fabulous. And we can't wait to share them with you after the beginning of the year. Uh, Absolutely. And so excited. Love, love, love Anna so much. If you follow us on Instagram, you've probably seen us share some of her work. And if you want to check her out, check out Nostalgic Mind Designs on TikTok and on Instagram. So the hot chick, not only is Jessica Spencer the most popular girl in school, she is also the meanest. But things change for the attractive teen when a freak accident involving a cursed pair of earrings and a chance encounter at a gas station causes her to switch bodies with Clive, a sleazy crook. Did not know his name was Clive. I called him (laughs) Rob Schneider the whole time. (laughs) Also, when they start calling him Spence, didn't realize that was her last name. Oh, I didn't realize that either. Just a couple of things to point out. (laughs) (laughs) Clive is a sleazy crook. Jessica, in the form of the repulsive Clive, struggles to adjust to this radical alteration and sets out to get her own body back before the upcoming prom. She may learn some things in the process, too. So it's starring Rob Schneider, Rachel McAdams, Anna Ferris. I feel like Rachel McAdams and Anna Ferris should be swapped there because Anna Ferris is in most of the movie. Rachel McAdams is in surprisingly little Matthew Lawrence and Eric Christian Olson directed by Tom Brady and written by Tom Brady and Rob Schneider you can currently watch it on Amazon Prime video and you can currently watch it on Amazon Prime but before we start let's get into our ratings rewind by the way it's not that douchebag who lives in Boston 
or <laughs> used to play for Boston Tom Brady. <laughs> Different dude. He's not talented enough to direct a movie. <laughs> plays for the Buccaneers now. Look, I knew a sports ball thing. You did. You did. And you. his ex-wife is a witch and she's cursing him as we speak. And I stand that. <laughs> You go, Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy, would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. Same-day rental trash like most of rob schneider's movies hmm. straight up trash <laughs> what is your y2k rating would buy it would buy it again i'm like 90 percent sure i did own this because i know i watched it a good jillion times <laughs> <laughs> jackie I bought it. I watched it a ton. I have a weird thing where I don't realize actors and actresses are them. Like after people get popular, I'm like, oh, I guess Anna Ferris was in the, the Hot Chick, which I have watched a million times. Like I don't, I swear she wasn't. She, she wasn't her full Anna Ferris self. So I, I, I think it makes sense that like you don't realize. This but movie. I do this with a lot of actors and actresses. It's not just, this is just one example. And look at me trying to be. I know. Be. <laughs> I just damn who I am. Yeah. <laughs> Danielle? So this is hard. I know, I have I think I've seen this movie once. I own it on DVD. Don't know why. <laughs> and it's not because like, I don't know if I said to him, I don't think I thought it was bad or anything. I just... It just was like a non-starter for me. I'm going to say would buy it again because I did buy it. <laughs> I just don't know why. <laughs> Somehow I never... acquired the hot chick. Do you I think... remember buying it? Like, do you remember the act of purchasing it? So when we worked at Blockbuster, I bought a lot of VHSs when we were, like, when Jackie worked there. Before I even started going there, I bought a bunch at some point, I kind of gave up my VHS collection because I was like, you know, I started buying more of the DVDs when I was working at Blockbuster and didn't like care about my VHSs. So in that process, I, whenever there were sales, I was just buying stuff up. Mm. So I bought the hot chick just because I apparently had money to burn. Maybe it was one of the like buy four get the fifth one free type I, it, sales <laughs> it definitely had to be and when i had my booming business blackbuster i bought a bunch of of movies at the time to you know i had a storefront to keep up you know what i mean amber <laughs> yeah <laughs> you had to have a good rotation of product and stuff <laughs> I did. You know, I had a supplier out in New York sending me the bootlegs, aka <laughs> my Danny. So let's get into. So, weird thing, I could not find the budget for this movie. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. it did make $54.6 million worldwide. Well, I guess this is probably his second biggest movie on his own because Deuce Bigelow is probably had a. I would say it's probably his biggest movie. Would you guys say? I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Rob Schneider is problematic. Yeah. In, <laughs> so, like, watching the movies now, that whole crew, you're like, okay. It doesn't pass the <laughs> sniff test. But, like, This man is a, he's a man of color. He's half Filipino, I think. I, I don't I know if so. he's, I think he's half Filipino. Mm -hmm. And my God, the amount of times that this man has played Hispanic roles and poorly and horribly representing, it, it makes me sick to kind of watch. Yeah. And then he also plays Asian characters horribly as well. And yes. I guess... Adam Sandler was like, it's fine <laughs> because he's, he's Filipino. He could do that. 
It it's, was not, in fact, it, fine. Not. He played a Hawaiian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, he just... Yeah. Yeah. It's like stereotypical, mm -hmm. real, Ugh. real gut wrenching bad. So I just wanted to kick the episode off just <laughs> saying that we acknowledge that. We, we acknowledge that he's probably a shit human being. Yeah. And he's not helped the culture at, at all. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like though some people of color kind of do these roles because they're trying to like get in the industry and establish themselves and they kind of kind of, you know take it because that's what they believe they have to but i think that he really doesn't think any of the things he's done is a problem so right which is that is the problem yes <laughs> <laughs> That is the problem. Let's start it off. Well, I did want to say that this was on our boy Little Raj. Shout out, roll mm -hmm. call. It is on his most hated list. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that this movie is, it's a comedy, but it kind of fits into like the girly, you know, all movies that are geared more towards females are considered rom-coms mm -hmm. but i would say it's weird that this is kind of in that category in an odd way because as gross as he adam sandler and stuff those like it fits into that niche i think yeah I don't know. well and there were parts of it that were surprisingly i feel like ahead of its time for 2002 very like, progressive yeah yeah like the the little brother who obviously like to dress up in women's clothing and even towards the end he has high heels on his dad's like you better learn how to run in those if you're gonna wear them like just accepting of him and yeah like i, I, I was wrote like, that line down for <laughs> that reason i was like that's just totally cool with it and it's, you know this is 20 years ago love it yeah. uh, amber did you notice or i'm sure you know who the mom is <laughs> Yes, she's <laughs> Jan Levinson Gould. <laughs> I also wrote her name down as soon as I saw her come up on screen. I was like, Melora Harden, we've got to talk about her because she is <laughs> a goddess, a goddess among men. And apparently her and Rachel McAdams are only 11 years apart in age. That, oh, it's, there are so many movies where the mom and the this is not the first time for Rachel McAdams because I think this is almost similar to her and Amy Poehler and Mean Girls. I yeah. think they had a, a pretty small gap as well, which was kind of hilarious. I actually think it's, I mean, yes, she she was in her 20s, but mm -hmm. that's not odd. I But I do think it's actually a bigger problem in Hollywood where once you're not playing the ingenue role, it's like they automatically age you up real, really quickly into playing middle age. Now yeah. with Amy Poehler, that's different because Tina Fey obviously just wanted like all her peeps to be in the movie, mm -hmm. but it happens a lot. They throw you in to be an ingenue with an old man when you're like 18. And yeah. then by the time you actually hit 30, you're done. You, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. You're playing middle age moms now. It's crazy. It is. <laughs> it is okay let's get into it the hot chick we start out with really bad cgi of a made-up land in 50 bc i was like is this the mummy <laughs> like <laughs> tell me they didn't rip off the mummy a hundred percent they a hundred percent did <laughs> <laughs> and so we see this really disgusting pharaoh king, some sort of leader, looking for his, his queen, like he's going to marry. And so it's this woman who has her, her, I'm assuming, like stewardess, servant, girl come up. She has these earrings. And if they each put an earring on, they body swap. So her, I, I would hope that the servant girl was okay with the, the sitch because she did say you no longer have to be a servant you'll live in wealth and splendor and then she could escape. yeah i have a feeling they must have discussed it beforehand yeah because like it would have been weird if she just ran up his like put the earring on and <laughs> yeah just, right. you know i think they had a plan for sure yeah 
And then it cuts to cheerleaders. So they copy the mummy and now they are copying Bring It On. Yes. Oh, the cheer was just awful. I don't remember what they were saying, but there was like three words in the whole thing that they just repeated. They didn't have the clovers to steal from. They did not. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) And they had... I can't remember her name. It's not Heisenberg. It's no, something... I thought they were saying Hindenburg and mm. was horribly offended because that's the blimp disaster, isn't yes. it? Yes. But I'm pretty sure they were saying Hildenburg. Okay. okay. Let's, so, let's hope. Yes. Yeah, so they have Hildenburg come out. She is plus size. Really wants to be a part of the cheer squad. They dress her as the rivals cheerleader and literally start throwing toilet paper a full-on toilet seat and just like being awful to her so that's not great yes i can't wait to talk about this character (laughs) (laughs) jessica not great no she's no regina george but this definitely was a really good way to scratch her itch to get her there Yes. Mm -hmm. Jessica walks so Regina George could run. (laughs) Then we see her hanging out with her best friend, April, played by Anna Faris, who does a lot of open mouth acting in this movie. (laughs) And I, of course, I hear better with subtitles. So it's just like, anytime she'd be like, ha, it's like, (laughs) gasp. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, not wrong, subtitles. Not wrong. And they're doing their boys are cheats and liars. They're such a big disgrace. They'll tell you anything to get to second baseball. Baseball, he thinks he's going to score. That whole cheer. Or like the little hand there, clappings hang- that you do. Oh, this like, okay, this little, I know the, you know, the clappy patty cake things that girls do when you're growing up, right? Right. And I remember certain ones. For some reason, this one feels ingrained to me, but I don't have any specific memory of engaging in it. Do I only know it from this, or was this yes. a thing? Okay. No. Okay. okay. Miss Lucy had a tugboat. That... No, that's uh, not where it starts. Where does boat. it start? A steamboat. No, it starts. Steamboat had a bell. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know where it starts, but a tell me no more. Ask me no more questions. No more questions. Tell, tell me, me no more, more lies. lies. The boys are in the bathroom, pulling down their flies are in the meadow, (laughs) the meadow's in the park. Miss Lucy and her boyfriend are kissing in the D-A-R-K, D-A-R-K, dark, dark, dark. And then it could just go on and on. Yes. Yes. I remember that because it was really fun as a child (laughs) because you were getting close each time just saying a curse word or something naughty and Mm -hmm. stopping. Yeah. (laughs) My favorite part of this chant is when they something say something jugs jugglers and acrobats and dancing bear named chuck (laughs) (laughs) that is my favorite part so we see her interacting with her best friend and then we see the maori twins as other friends wait i forgot to ask amber amber do you like their patty cake game or do you prefer the handshake in the parent trap? I'd say the the handshake in the parent trap minus the background music. Can we just okay. hear, like clapping and stuff? Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, valid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Continue, Jack. It's a hard pr- like we the people wanted to know. Just okay. <laughs> okay. I understand. So T and Tamara Maori are in this movie and have like four lines between I'm not the mad two at them. it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm glad they're in it. It reminds me of Tatiana Ali having her cameo or that role in Drawbreaker. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Wish they had more parts, just say a larger yeah. part. And then we are introduced to Ling Ling, who is half Korean and half Black. And her mama tries so hard. Okay. So I think the fact that in a way this movie was trying to discuss biracial people and their split of identity and Mm -hmm. her feeling ashamed. And since Rob Schneider helped write this movie, 
it makes me wonder if we're if that's where some of it is coming from from him to even like talk about this right because it, it was just it's, it's interesting now her mom trying to reach out and, and like just try was commendable but also there's so many things that she says that are just like so problematic yes. and I, I have to address that in this movie she just say does say the n-word which mm -hmm. was like not okay the fact that someone wrote it into the movie that an actor was able to say it and like no one blinked an eye but again the 2000s y'all it took me out of the movie when it happened because I haven't seen it in so long I was like what the fuck I was <laughs> really annoyed and that's like a conversation that we have in the black community with other people of color because they're sometimes we're in adjacent communities with each other and we're obviously being oppressed together and sometimes people in other communities feel like it's okay because maybe their black friend said it was okay for them to say but I think the rule should be if your black friend says it's okay for you to say it around them that's fine but not in a movie yeah you just don't get a yeah. pass it's there were there was crazy. a lot was of jarring every time yeah yeah I was like oh like as much as Leeling's mom is trying like bringing her what sounds like an amazing fucking lunch. She gets yeah. kimchi and bulgogi. Like, <laughs> sign me up. But in that time frame, Jackie, you I know, know. I know. Yeah. For immigrants in the 2000s and the 90s when we grew up, we were not embracing our foods in that way because it wasn't accepted. The white kids would make fun right. of us for it. And it's hilarious now that white people are like in love with all these cultural foods that we got tormented for making and warming up when we were at school but I think it would have been a really interesting topic if he would have really addressed like either made that character half white and half mm -hmm. Asian like himself to really talk about why and if he was going to go lean into her being half black and half Asian to maybe have conversations in her being more embarrassed about the black side or the colorism and racism within that community that happens yeah. for a lot of people who present as black even though they're mixed so there was an opportunity missed unfortunately yes. yeah then we also see she does i i don't know if she has a name i i called her the weird chick which is not nice to say oh the, the outcast yeah, the I kept witch. calling her goth girl. I don't... Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what her name is. She is. Had a name? I don't know. I mean, of course she had a name. She's a person. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see her kind of sitting there and they're kind of poking fun at her. She's hexing them under her breath. Then we see <clears throat> Danielle, what kind of car does Jessica drive? A VW bug? Yes. Yellow. Yes. Ah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, her name is Eden oh okay I apologize for calling you the weird girl Eden <laughs> I didn't mean it I don't know if they ever said it out loud hmm so they all hop in Jessica's beetle and they head to the mall we see it's kind of it seems like a usual routine she goes and get some drinks and flirts by licking the whipped cream and the kid gives them to her for free. And then they run into Bianca, who is the head cheerleader for the rival, the Foxes. And they're like pretending like they're being nice to one another, but they both can't stand one another. But Jessica slips some merchandise in Bianca's bag. And the way the security <laughs> guard tackles her is just it's a cinematic masterpiece <laughs> and it, in this scene one of bianca's i don't know minions is played by ashley simpson and this is her film debut she has a few words in this movie just a few and then did you notice what the security guard yells as he's tackling bianca no what he yells Something to the effect of like not today, Winona, because yes. Winona Ryder is caught shoplifting. So, which I'm actually surprised because you know 
Adam Sandler is the person who gave her a chance, like no one was hiring her. And he is the one who hired her for Mr. Deeds when mm-hmm. no one else really would at that time. So I was a little surprised, but he was only an ex- executive producer. So maybe he's just like, eh, he didn't win that battle, I guess. Yeah, this was produced under Happy Madison production. So it's definitely under the Adam Sandler umbrella. Adam Sandler does show up in the next store they go into, which is a <clears throat> Treasures of Ancient World type store. So there is a lady, she has all of these like African relics and Angie Stone, which I was so excited. If you guys <laughs> don't know, she's an amazing singer and I was very happy to see her on screen. Continue, sorry. <laughs> I mean, the very little dialogue she had, she just ate up. She did. And I want to say that I was surprised that Adam Sandler was not problematic at all, really, in this scene as much. Uh, I mean, but the dreads, yes. Yeah, yeah. But as much, I guess, as much as he normally would have been. Yes. So <laughs> yes. I was so, like, great. He he plays, I, I'm assuming he works in the store, and he kind of reprises his running joke from an SNL sketch where he's like explaining what all of these relics are. <laughs> and every time he finishes, he's like, you can put your weed in there. <laughs> so, I like like the diorama of a, I don't know, <laughs> like a miniature <laughs> building. A Nelson Mandela's, Nelson Mandela's prison jail. cell. Oh my God. So... As they're looking through all this stuff, Jessica sees the earrings that we saw earlier in 50 BC and really likes them, but the lady is very quick to say, those are actual relics. You cannot, those are not for sale. And Jessica's not used to hearing no. And so when the lady turns around, she swaps the earrings out for some other cheapy earrings and is like, okay, I'm ready to check out. Teef. (coughs) Teef. Such a, grandmother would say. a thief. <laughs> no. Right. Oh, and then also in the scene is like, like as she's telling the story of these <laughs> earrings, it's like this swell of drumming, and you're like, ooh, like it, it's getting really serious, it's, and it's giving Jumanji. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then she's like, will you stop that drumming? And is Adam Sandler sitting in the corner? He goes, oh, you can hear that? Like, <laughs> You're banging on fucking drums. <laughs> of course we can hear that. So then we see it transitions to Rob Schneider. Now we know his name is Clive. Robbing a gas station. And of course there's only like maybe 60 bucks in the till. And so he's just grabbing random things. He's, as I like to call, wheezing the jaws <laughs> from the, <laughs> the Slurpee machine. Shout out to Encino Man. He's stealing candy bars, lottery tickets, like anything he he's thinks like, is like a value. Making nachos in his backpack. <laughs> he really is. And the girls pull up. And so I'm very confused as to where they live. My only guess is, like, I know it's probably California, but for me, I'm like, the only place I know that you can pull up and someone is guaranteed to pump your gas is New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. I agree, but then they also say something, I feel like, during the the cheerleading competition that it's, like, in Southern California or something. Like, there's some reference to California. I'm like, how are you having a full-service pump in California? Like, it just didn't make any sense. Anyway, (laughs) it's an Adam Sandler movie. I should not be questioning (laughs) the full service gas station. But Jessica pulls up and she's like pulling back and forth over the bell hose thing. I am 40 years old. Still don't know how those things work. Uh Is it air pressure? Not a clue. Is it a little cable in there? Uh Anyway. So he goes out and she's like, gas pumps on the other side, which bitch pull in the right way, right. make them like stretch the hose all the way around. And your top is down. It, that hose is going to like clock someone in the head as they're trying to stretch it over. And then she's like, and check the oil and stuff. So he's like under the hood. And then this bitch proceeds to honk the horn and make <laughs> him whack his head. 
Now, honestly, this guy's such a skis ball. He deserves yes. it. But yeah, she was. They, if they, it was the regular attendant, she would have yeah. done the same fucking thing. Honestly, these two are parallels. They are the same, same coin, different sides. Yes. A hundred percent. The only difference so, is she has pretty privilege to be able mm -hmm. to like do what the fuck she wants. Yes. So as she's waiting for the gas to pump and him to do whatever under the hood, she's trying on the earrings, but she only tries on one question mark. And so as she pulls away, he notices that the other one is laying on the ground. So he throws it in his sack of cheese and lottery tickets and moseys on home. Maybe she tried on both in one fell. But she never moved. She was in the car the whole time. She has her top down. Well, but maybe. did the wind, like, carry it out? <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe it, like, wasn't in all the way she turned. I don't know. Okay. But I don't know. The bag maybe. fell. And I I don't know. <laughs> trying to figure out the plot holes. We're trying to find logic where logic doesn't <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you just, this is a Rob Schneider movie, and we just have to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> next thing we're gonna say this is a tom brady movie so she gets home and you can see that she enjoys playing basketball she picks up the basketball and she has a very distinct way of shooting three points another sports ball thing i did not fuck up this episode and so oh that she... was it yeah <laughs> Thought you were we thought you were gonna like else. announce another. Oh no, ball shooting thing. because later on when it when Taquito is playing basketball, <laughs> the dad's like, keep you keep hitting those three points. So three pointers. Three pointers. <laughs> Semantics. So she goes upstairs. Her brother, who God given name Booger, are we deciding? I, I don't think they gave him a name. They just call him Booger. I as love that everyone calls him Booger. My <laughs> my theory, my my lovable theory, is that Jessica called him Booger just because he was an annoying old Booger, and then everybody just adopted it. Like when <laughs> I started calling my dog Pootie, and then everyone else in the family started calling her Pootie. <laughs> it's not her name. <laughs> so Booger is in Jessica's room. She's like, you're trying on my bra. He's like, I'm not trying it on. I'm simply placing it up against my body. <laughs> <laughs> and then she notices he has a black eye. Obviously, he gets picked on for being different. But he's also wearing her lipstick, which is where she draws the line. Is mm -hmm. like GTFO. <laughs> then this next scene is so confusing for me. Is this Billy? Sean? Yes. Yes. So we sneak out of our house, risk getting caught, shimmy down a tree just to stand in the front yard, stand in the front yard, <laughs> give him a boner, and then is like, good night, I'll see you later, and shimmies back up the tree. A am I missing anything? It they didn't go anywhere. It's You're missing the corny ass hand movements. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> That's the sign that they would do to show each other that they were body swapped. <laughs> that it is. It's true. So. I, I'm sorry. Have any of you ever had a boyfriend or even with your husbands that you do some weird shit like this? Like a weird thing? I don't even know what to call this. I mean, we uh, have weird things, but it's not that. <laughs> that's, that's outrageous. <laughs> that's some 13 year old shit. Don't do that shit. <laughs> Ken and I kiss three, like, over the phone. If we're saying goodbye, we kiss three times. Is, and then we Is there him. a reason behind that one? No. When did that start? What's the origin story? So, like, one day. Who started it? <laughs> Ken would... So, I think in our... In the long, long ago, when we used to have to email one another, because he did not have text messaging for a really long time because his mom refused to pay for it, we would email, and at the bottom of the emails, we would write kiss, kiss. And so then on the phone, but then it evolved into like three. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The thing we do. I mean, we all have our thing. We do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they just, she just goes back to bed after that question mark also in the scene as she's like 
going past her parents' bedroom. Her dad is actively looking at a Playboy, <laughs> and her mom is reading like a. It's not Popular Mechanics. It's some sort of science ma- magazine, mm-hmm. and it mentions. Hold on, let me pull up the Reddit where someone pointed it out. Yeah, like the dad sitting there watch, reading Literally a Literally looking at a centerfold. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, hello? Is this normal? So it was something to the effect of like, here it is. Sorry. Okay, so she's reading the Scientific American. And the, and the headline on it is the new germ threat to plague the world. COVID. That was not foresight into the future. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that the hot chick from 2002 <laughs> was literally the equivalent to Nostradamus telling us <laughs> of COVID. I think it might be. <laughs> Here, let me see who pointed it out on Reddit because I want to give credit where credit is due because they took the time to pause. <laughs> Screen cap and post it on Reddit. Danny doodled on Reddit. And then a lot of people said the germ threat is Rob Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong. I endorse um, that message 100%. <laughs> so after that, Jessica goes back to her room, is talking to April on the phone. They say goodnight. And now it's the next morning and Jessica is now no longer has her pretty privilege. She wakes up in Clive's body and this opening scene where he, or like this scene where he's like getting out of bed and he's like doing like all the like little like body movements (laughs) and like walking very femininely to the bathroom Sits down, starts peeing, recognizes that the stream doesn't sound quite right, looks down. (laughs) When he screams and the stream gets faster and louder, (laughs) gets me every fucking time. It's so good. That tiny detail just floors me every time. I love it. (laughs) And then Jessica goes and looks in the mirror. And from now on, when we say Jessica... Until we tell you otherwise, it's Rob Schneider in in Jessica's body. Jessica goes to the mirror and sees that she is a man and promptly passes out. So It's just interesting that she had the foresight when this whole situation happens to sneak out of her house and not Mm -hmm. let her parents see. Like she was, because most people would have been so freaked out. They would have ran to their parents and been like, Mm -hmm. But she knew that she had to hide that, which I thought was pretty interesting. And she even sneaks into her parents' bedroom, grabs her dad's clothes, and then she goes to school, (laughs) calls April, who's sitting in class, and is like, I need you to come out to the bleachers. So April comes out to the bleachers. And then when she is trying to whisper (laughs) April at her, and it's just like, April... April and then it's just like April (laughs) and she's like freaked out there's this man that knows my name has lured me to the bleachers with Jessica's cell phone and then she's like I have pepper spray and pulls out the keychain that we all had in the (laughs) early 2000s that just had like eight different stuffed animal keychains there were like so many you can, do you remember any, specifically any of yours? Me? Yeah, from high school. I don't, I think I had a Tweety Bird one. If, if memory serves me, I don't know. <laughs> do you remember yours? I do. I was very proud of it. I had a Mewtwo stuffed animal keychain. <laughs> from Pokemon (laughs) because I was super cool. I also had, what was the Lala, the yellow Teletubby? Yeah. Lala. I had Lala as well. Mm. I don't know. I like, don't remember if I had a bunch, but I do remember Tweety Bird somehow, some way. Amber, did you have any? I did not. (laughs) I did not. You know my keys. You know what my keys look like. I've got <laughs> Mario and Reptar, but they're flat. They're not fuzzy. <laughs> so 
So there are a couple of things here that kind of clue April into Jessica's telling the truth. Number one is she's eating a snowball. And earlier in the movie, Jessica was like, stop eating those. They're going to go straight to your ass. And so she says something similarly. I've never had a snowball before. Okay. I was going to ask, do y'all like snowballs? I don't. And I don't think I've ever met anyone who does. Yeah. But they're coconut, so I would never even dream of yeah, eating one. Same. Hate that. See, I like coconut, but I hate snowballs. I only like coconut in when my grandma uses it for making rice and peas, which you don't really even taste it. Coconut milk and pina coladas. That's <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. And getting caught in the rain. Yeah. I do <laughs> I do like I do like coconut to drink coconut water, but like I think it's the texture that I don't like. It's taste and texture for me. Like mm-hmm. I can't. Mm-mm. And coconut water tastes like dirty feet. Sorry, <laughs> it does not. Have you tasted Pos- dirty feet before? Because that's a right. How many people's feet are you with? <laughs> <laughs> it's what I imagine people's dirty feet taste like. <laughs> like sock sweat. Ugh, <laughs> it's not that bad, Jackie. It's a little sweet. In comparison to that. <laughs> There's too many homo losers, too many trammers, but I like to watch them for rotten treasure. Hello, I'm Kai Bobby, co-host of the Rotten Treasure podcast, where I talk with my friend Jim O'Donnell and a special guest about movie franchises that arguably went on a little longer than they should have. Hey Jim, what movies do we review? Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, Home Alone 3, Home Alone 4, Taking Back the House, wait, 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 wait. Home Jim, Alone, Jim, 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 Holiday Jim, Jim, Heist. We, we, we review more than just Home Alone movies. Tremors, Tremors 2, Aftershock. <sighs> Do we have any guests? Do we have guests, Jim? Scott Campbell, Robert and Donnell from Watching It, Sarah Carter. <sighs> okay, how do people find us on the internet, Jim? Follow us at Rotten underscore Treasure on Instagram, at Rotten Treasure on Twitter, Rotten Treasure okay, on right. Facebook. You know what? That, that's enough of your list. So, folks, if you still want to find us, you can listen to us on your preferred podcast app, such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Podbean.com, Google Podcasts, Listen Notes, not SoundCloud. So now we get one of the most iconic lines, <laughs> few lines, dialogue in the movie. So it, it starts off with the April <laughs> and then it devolves into convincing April that it's Jessica. And so she tells the story of second grade where it, when April moved there from Arkansas <laughs> and she talked funny and what's the rest of that line, Amber? And your front two teeth were brown. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous and good. And I love it. And then there's lots more open a- mouth acting from Anna Ferris as she <laughs> takes in this information. And then they do their little hand patty cake to confirm that it is Jessica. Can we talk about this moment? She points out the locket. And she's like, I got that for you when your grandmother is sick. And I also meant to mention it too with Booger when she's like covering up his black eye. She's not a horrible, like completely devoid of love person. No. Like she's a shithead, but she takes care of her people. And I yes, I can appreciate that. Yes. About her. Yeah. Okay. If she just wasn't actively shitty to other people. Yes, yeah, she... Yeah, like the lower the totem pole is the problem. Yeah. Like if yeah. she was she, just, yeah, yeah, she punches down a lot. Yeah, very much for very no much. reason. Because then it's like the other thing that we they never like really covered is like why she does that. You know, is mm-hmm. she really insecure? Because she never shows that in any way. Mm-hmm. Like, and she's not self aware either. When they when they finally address like everybody in the school thinks you're an asshole, <laughs> and you have a lot of enemies, she has no idea, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, but that's Very also complex character. Yeah, that's also coming from two male writers. That like yes. 
Yeah. Even if you were the most aloof jerk face person in the school, you would know that people hate you. And it could be the like, well, they, I the, like the whole, I can't ha- help it if they, they, if I'm popular, you know, like right. it could have been something like that. Like, well, I'm pretty and they're jealous, but instead it was this whole, like, people hate me. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're a fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> So, oh, and just prior to April coming to terms with It's Jessica, she does finally find her pepper spray, sprays him in the face. He tumbles down about 80 steps and then stands up, slips on the snowball he threw and tumbles down about 100 more steps. So there's lots of pratfalls in this movie. And you can see in the scene clearly that it it's a stunt double and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yes. I do want to circle back and say that even though two guys wrote this movie, one of the best things about this movie is, yes, Jessica is like in love with her boyfriend but it is very much a true best friends mm-hmm. female friendship movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yes, they turn it into something kind of gross because they try to have one of them fall in love with the other one. But yeah, it is a, a testament of a real strong girlfriend relationships, which if you think about it, we don't get a ton of those kind of movies in this mm-hmm. time frame, which is nice. Yeah, it, they don't do a horrible job. There are just those inklings where you're just immediately like, this was written by a dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to get, I want to drag them and trash them as much as possible, but I yeah. would like to give credit where credit is due that it's pretty decent. I was surprised how much I enjoyed that part. Yes. So they go back to April's house to try and figure out a game plan. Like, Why the fuck did this happen? How do we switch it back? Poor April's mom is just, she becomes so obsessive as to why April is like having these mood swings. And really it's Jessica upstairs that April is hiding, (laughs) but it's like all the hair on the soap and like loud, like baritone voice yelling (laughs) and stuff like that. So the mom is like literally going insane, trying to figure this shit out throughout the, the movie. Can we talk about, like, her parents' dynamic with each other? So you're seeing, you see two relationships with Jessica's parents and how they're not communicating and relating to each other. But I do say that, like, I admire that Jessica's dad does not put her mom down and kind of put, like, he, he doesn't, like, just he's not dismissive that's the word he's not dismissive of her while on the other hand what's her name april April. on the other hand (laughs) april's parents you could see this dynamic of the dad being very dismissive of the mother he loves his daughter very much and he he kind of like leave you leave her alone essentially but he has no empathy for the wife or support Mm -hmm. whatsoever and it's used as this joke, but it's actually quite sad, but speaks very much to a lot of relationships where it shows that there's a lack of respect for the matriarch in that family, which is kind of sad. Yes. So April calls Jessica's parents and says that Jessica decided to go on the ski trip with Billy. That way, like, they don't have to worry about over that weekend, like, how essentially lying to her parents or figuring out why Jessica's not home. They're just, they've made up this lie. And so April becomes pretty, pretty interested in just the fact that Jessica has a penis. Yes. It's like a big thing. And like every single person that they tell, he has to show his penis to, which is again, a guy telling the story because if a, yep. if it was the other way around they'd want to see boobs but girls would never i don't think we'd want to see it no you know especially he's not hot <laughs> i don't yeah. want to say it that <laughs> way but he... <laughs> and so at, at a low point in the middle of the night jessica calls billy and it's just it's a man sobbing into the phone <laughs> and billy is just 
so confused. He's playing Scrabble with his parents and his little brother at the wherever they're skiing. And and then Jessica just hangs up on him. And then during that phone call, he says, I should have made love to you when I had the chance. And Billy's like, who the fuck <laughs> is calling me? <laughs> <laughs> who is this grown man the next day they tell all the other friends so that they can help figure this this <laughs> problem out and this is when jessica has to show everyone else his penis because everyone's super interested and then we get the pillow fight oh my god uh, well do they talk about enemies in this scene too? This is this where they figure they're like, okay, oh, or they is that, might. or is that when? Um, yeah, I think I they, I think they do talk about enemies during the sleepover. Yeah, yeah. Um, because pretty know. soon after that is when they're going to start going to the other girls. I don't know why men are obsessed with pillow fights. I it, <laughs> I don't even think I've ever had one in real no. life at a slumber party. Never. Ever. And then because it's just because a man, she just beats the shit out of everyone and ends up knocking everyone out. And and nobody's concerned that, like, <laughs> April has flown through the wall. Like, <laughs> there is cracks in the wall. <laughs> and Rob Schneider is not that big to have that. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not bigger than some of the girls. No. So where's all that power come from? I feel mm -hmm. like actual Jessica could take him. Yeah, yeah. I, that was him giving himself <laughs> some superpowers <laughs> yeah. in this movie. And then the next day, one of my favorite scenes is just like Jessica's waking up and April's just sitting next to the bed like, <laughs> hey, did you sleep well? And then she goes, did you have any special dreams? And Jessica rolls over and she has like this giraffe puppet <laughs> on her penis and it is straight up erect. And she hops out of bed. She's like, oh my God, my first boner. <laughs> <sighs> to be honest, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I got a boner. <laughs> like yeah. what do you what do I do with this? So now Jessica is at her house. He kind of hides out, sees the car leave, but doesn't realize dad stayed home and it's just mom leaving. So he's walking up the steps and dad comes out of nowhere is like, hey, you must be the new gardener, blah, blah, blah. Dad's in the shortest shorts ever. <laughs> like those shorts were cootie cutters. I, I thought dad was giving some like homoerotic feels and mm -hmm. actions in this movie which i was like I, I i hadn't seen the movie in so long so i don't i didn't remember what was going to happen next and i'm like this is very uncomfortable so i thought it was kind of gross that both they in this movie they had the dad kind of be weird with jessica and i was like Please don't let him try to like make out with his child. But then I was like, oh, fine, it's safe. But then the mom tries to make out with her. And I'm just like, this is so traumatizing. Yes. And unnecessary. Very. Very unnecessary. <laughs> there were yeah. so many other ways that could have given the ick without it literally being, being like parents. insensuous, weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. So dad comes out, Jessica's pulling out what little Spanish they remember. <laughs> Just a lot of C's. At one point, they say teenage arrows. <laughs> 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 and mm. Jessica finally introduced himself as Taquito to the dad. So now we have Clive, the, the robber man. We have him as Jessica, and now we have when he's around dad, he's Taquito. Taquito. Yes, and he'll evolve into Spence soon enough. Mm -hmm. Many, many roles that lots she... of names to keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> She's playing a lot of different roles in Clive's body. And they're like sit down and sitting down and just like broing out. And then dad says, I had to give <laughs> give up 
the spicy food on account of my asshole and leans over and farts. Who's and like, the way Jessica's just like, oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's weird that like the mom sees Takito slash Jessica with the dad and she like you're married to your husband all this time, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see him outside with the gardener and you automatically assume that your husband and the gardener are having an affair. Like, I feel like to get to that conclusion, you have to have had some questions earlier mm -hmm. for it to not, for it to just like naturally happen that way for you to jump to that conclusion. And then secondly, after seeing that maybe Takito is gay, that you try to sleep with him as well. Now I'm guessing she thought maybe he was bisexual. I just, there's a lot of leaps and bounds here yes. about what's, what, like, my husband is cheating with the gardener. I too would like to cheat with the same gardener. <laughs> yeah. That was just like, wait Who a looks minute. like Rob Schneider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just, I personally was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, there are, there are a lot on. of, yeah. A lot going on in that marriage. And then the dad says something about, like, he, he tried something new with the trimmage, and then said, shows... Uh, gave himself a porn star cut or something. Does, he, yes. And he shows Takito his penis <laughs> and immediately emotional damage. That's, like... I was like, come, like, come on. Are they on the front porch at this point or the back yeah. porch? The I think front. they're on the back. Are they in the back? I think so I because thought... it's off the kitchen because they're drinking beers. Yeah, they were. Okay. okay. I don't, I don't know, but. Lots to unpack about just the public with... exposure here. Yes. It's not even just that, like, the writers yeah let's have the dad show his daughter his dick like yeah. i wouldn't i would never be the same again i would never be the same again like you might as well kill me because i am <laughs> never looking at my daddy again <laughs> gouging your eyes out <laughs> and i just can't fathom my dad meeting someone after like one or two times and then trying to show them their dick yeah. And then as Takito is mowing the lawn, he sees Booger just completely dressed up and like living his best life in his <laughs> in his room or in Jessica's room. And he sees Takito see him and Jessica does this thing where she like winks and points at him. And so then Booger's kind of like his wheels are already turning that like something ain't right because he did the thing that Jessica always does. And then the friends pull up in their car. What kind of car was it, Danielle? It was a VW Cabrio with a top down. It's Good cool. job. I'm so proud of you. And so they head to school. And so now the first person they see is Hildenberg. She's in the science lab. The amount of fat jokes about her in this movie is upsetting. So she's in the science lab. You think she's going to be like this huge like science person. And like they are asking and she's like, it's physically impossible to body swap, like, like scientifically not possible. And then as she's talking to them, she has a giant bowl of ice cream and she takes whatever she's like cooking up in her beaker and pours it on her ice cream and starts eating it. It's like really did we have to like we can't just be smart in the science lab yeah. it's it's funny because in in some ways it's very fat shaming yes. and then in other ways you know like there are some like body positivity moments mm -hmm. there are so many layers that i i know i can't speak freely <laughs> on the podcast to the to the extent that not everyone has their mind open to a lot of things but to the fact that there is a black man who mm -hmm. is coveting said white woman who is larger. And he likes her without like it being weird. He's not embarrassed by it he, because obviously in the black culture, it is normalized that black women have fuller size shapes and 
it's actually a good thing a lot of the times. So it's not unusual that we see a lot of larger white women with black men, and it's not a problem. It's almost a cliche at this point, which is what they play into in this movie. And I do like that he's just like, he has no qualms about it. He just loves her. Like he's Mm -hmm. obsessed with her and there, and she like is open to it and is not insecure about it. Like she doesn't show any insecurities like that. She hates being fat in any way, but there are a lot of weird, uncomfortable jokes about her being fat, Yes, which was really annoying because I was like oh so many topics in this movie got so close to being yeah it was like almost there and then you do something and like you fucked it up yeah Yeah. (laughs) we almost had a conversation about weight and being beautiful at any size and being biracial and like things like that like and and then you go and fuck it up Mm -hmm. yeah also yeah just (sighs) so and the thing that gets hildenberg to sympathize with jessica is that jessica says you don't know what it's like to wake up every morning and have to shave your chin and hildenberg says yes i do (laughs) and that's the thing that This person that's probably tortured you for your entire school career, you're finally like, okay, I'll help you because you have to shave. I think (laughs) it's so funny and it it happens a lot in movies so much that the marginalized person is always 100% like kind and forgiven. Mm -hmm. And I do think when you're marginalized, you do have more empathy but I definitely think that people write that that way because they believe that we're supposed to intrinsically be that way. We're not right. supposed mm-hmm. to fight back or want revenge because that is the worst nightmare, right? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you don't want people to rise up who have been oppressed in any way. Right. So I just always find that interesting. She should have beat that bitch's ass. I'm just she saying. should have. <laughs> and then they go see Eden the goth chick and they start asking her about like magic and like did you put hexes on us and she's like yeah but never this it was always just like my favorite one she says is make your one of your boobs bigger than the other and (laughs) april goes oh i think you got me with that one (laughs) but then she does start mentioning like hoodoo and voodoo and santeria And starts going into... So they ro- racially profile yes. Bianca once they talk yes. start talking about Santeria. Which, yeah, as mm-hmm. soon as they start talking about Santeria, because it does come from Latin American cultures, they're immediately like, it's Bianca who is the rival head cheerleader and happens to be Latina. And then they're like, well, it's ladies night at the club. She likes to dance. We need to go there. And so... And what kind of club is this? Okay, so... They go to the club. These girls are under 18. What is this a teen club? Because there were grown ass men there. Mm-hmm. Actually, Hindenburg is it Hind- Hind- Hindle? Hildenburg. Hildenburg. <laughs> Actually, Hildenburg, the her new boyfriend that she meets at the club, mm-hmm. is, is in a college. predator. Oh, right. Is in college. But is a predator. Can we talk about the name of the club? What is it? Instant Tang. Which makes me feel gross. Yeah. But isn't all Tang instant? But isn't Tang Jackie. for poo oh, tang. tang? Oh, t- I was thinking the delicious orange drink that astronauts drink. I was like, Jackie. My bad. My Tang is not instant. No, it's not. <laughs> My brain didn't even go there. Oh. Look at me being so pure. Of yeah. mind and heart. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Men, if you think that Tang is instant, that is a problem. And you need to learn some foreplay. Thank you. <laughs> Mic drop. Oh, but before we get to instant Tang, we need a makeover scene. <laughs> Wait! I was this just about makeover... to ask you if we could go back. <laughs> <laughs> this makeover scene, it doesn't make any sense. They go through all the Backstreet Boys and they just they just start back at one. 
why Rab Schneider couldn't have cut his hair in this movie, I don't know. I uh, w- yeah, like what is that? I don't just even trim know. it up. It looks awful. There's no I guess- rhyme or reason to how any of it is sitting on his head. <laughs> and who whose clothes is he wearing? Because he has this makeover, but it looks like he's literally wearing Jessica's clothes. Yes, but in a, as a man, <laughs> and. Like, I guess maybe they couldn't cut his hair or do anything with his hair because then when he transforms back, it wouldn't, like, that be the piece same. That on his head could have easily been a wig and we wouldn't have questioned <laughs> a fucking thing. So, no. <laughs> Sorry. Can't give that one a pass. That, it looks so, like a skunk died on there. After we go through the makeover scene and he's back to being his original <laughs> look, April starts kind of side eyeing him. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, April, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Which, okay. In one way, I think it's what, beautiful that, like, come on. If I could find a man that is like Jackie, but a man, I would date her. <laughs> Like, it's the dream to be able to literally date your best friend, yeah. but, like, not sexually, not sexually, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't fault her, but it's, but it's the body. I'm like, it's Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we are now at Instant Tang. And he goes up to the bar to order a bunch of drinks for his friends and then order and says, and I'll have a screaming orgasm on the beach with sugar around the rim. Yum. (laughs) And the bartender keeps like side eyeing him because like he's greeting him as gay. And apparently that's just like not okay. I would have just leaned into it and been like, whatever, fuck you. But. Well, um, and the bar the bartender does look very like masculine, like he's mm-hmm. very tall and like looks like he works out and stuff, like a man's man. And so Jessica keeps saying these really feminine things and having to go back and be like, "Oh, I mean, a brewski for me, a double brewski." I do my one of my favorite lines is when they spot Bianca on the dance floor and. Oh, what is the line? I'm going to show her. Oh, I got to find it. I got to find it because it's like literally my, I don't know why it's my favorite line, but it is. Do you know what I'm talking about? Amber, help me out. What's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) What? (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I'm going to show her or something. Oh, God. (laughs) I'll find it. It's very stupid and silly, but it just makes me laugh so much. Hold on. Well, damn it. I can't find it, but that's my favorite scene where he's like, I'm going to show her about the dance moves on the floor. Well, and and then she's like, this is my song and it's AM to PM. That's the damn line. I've been struggling over here. Oh, sorry. I thought there was something more to it than that's my song. It, I said it was silly, but it there it, there's a line. That's the line. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I it's not the full line, but it it's the gist of it. So uh, Jessica heads down there and has a dance off with Bianca to AM, from AM to PM. <laughs> And then has a solo dance uh-huh. to Mysticals, <laughs> Shake Your Ass. And it's literally for two seconds. Yeah. It's yes. the shortest dance thing I've ever seen. And the song just abruptly ends. <laughs> yes. And then another song starts. And everyone's like, wow, yes. That was fantastic. But as he is dancing with Bianca... He's checking for the scorpion tattoo on her back that indicates she is into Santeria or practices Santeria. I don't practice Santeria. 
I ain't <laughs> got no crystal ball. What, Daniel? <laughs> so this is the line. Okay. I'll show her that's my song. She's got a straw. She sips and then she goes down there. <laughs> Excellent job. I'm glad you worked really hard to find <laughs> it. I love I just, the attitude of it, like, come on. Have you never seen your rival on the dance floor try to dance to your song? You're about to say, you, you're like, I'm about to tear her ass up. With my I can't song. dance, so that will never happen to me. I forget sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I dance for both of us. And then after the dance, she she's leaning up against the bar and she's like, I have to go to the little girl's room before I soak my panties. This whole fucking scene <laughs> is infuriating because it's so unnecessary and just weird. Why is there ice in the it's urinal? It's a thing. It's a thing. Like, it is a very common thing. I But why, why though? Why? I just want to know why. I <laughs> think it's the splashing. Why? <laughs> Hold on. I'm asking Google. Why? So she, she goes that? into the bathroom and clearly, what I don't understand is she's been using this dick for how long now? A few days? And so now all of a sudden she doesn't know how to pee? But she, she always been sitting... sits down. Uh, yeah. Well, she can't use the stall because there's someone tearing it up. Pooping. What were you going to say, Amber? I just, I feel like as a teenage girl, I would know, like, if I suddenly was a dude, I would know how to stand up and pee. So it says that ice helps freeze the odor-causing molecule, molecules in urine, which help prevent odors from being released. And then as the ice melts, it wa it flushes away the urine. And some bar owners say it works even better than urinal cakes because it actually flushes the urine instead of trying to deodorize it. That is nasty, but interesting science. Science. Yeah. <laughs> So if you have men in your family and they're nasty, go get them ice packs. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bathroom attendant is so helpful. Also, when, okay, I don't care, like peeing, standing up, like I get all that. You know that's a urinal. You have had to hear the word urinal and know what it is used for. Why are you grabbing ice out of somewhere you know someone pisses? <laughs> Just pure stupidity, Jackie. Anywho. The confidence with which she picks it up. <laughs> oh. Why is there <laughs> ice here? <laughs> the bathroom attendant is comedic genius and legend Dick Gregory. If you don't know who that is, you should go look him up. He is one of the pioneers from of comedy, black or white. I was shocked. And not sure why the fuck he was in this movie. I, he's very kind and, and explains how to use his penis. And, oh, prior to the bathroom attendant explaining how to use the penis, one of the college guys comes in with the worst fucking looking ponytail I've ever seen on a man. And, like, is peeing. And so Jessica's kind of, like, peering around watching how he's doing it and so the college guys weirded out and then the bathroom attendant played by dick gregory is like well aim for that cigarette but you gotta hold on to it but not too tight shake it more than twice and you're playing with it like he's just giving all these helpful hints after jessica leaves the bathroom the bro is very the college bro is very upset he was looking at his junk so <laughs> They need to fight in the alley. And yes. the way in which Jessica cat scratch fights <laughs> with this man. And then finally snatches his hair and twirls him around enough where the hair just yanks out of his head, question mark. Yeah. I mean, I he needed like that haircut. Reminiscent of the pillow fight where it's yes. just like obscene strength that no person actually has. <laughs> Because you're fighting another man at this point. It's not like yeah. it's girls and that's the reason why. And I did girls in 
air quotes, by the way, for our listeners. But the finishing line on this fight is so amazing. (laughs) After Jessica kicks the shit out of this college bro, she says, you think you're so cool because you can pee with your penis. Get a new conditioner because your your ends are totally split. (laughs) And... Often I think of the line, you're so cool. You think you're so cool cool. with your penis. And anytime anyone mansplains anything to me, I'm just like. That's what's, yeah, yeah, going on in my brain. Internal dialogue. So the next morning they're at school. They're trying to get Jessica now Spence at school a job as a janitor. And apparently April's boyfriend, Jake, went on the skiing trip with Billy. He comes back. And he's like, oh, yeah, we didn't do much skiing. Meanwhile, sunburned from (laughs) skiing and like just the white where the goggles were. And he's wearing a scarf in, I think, California somewhere. And she calls him on it and takes the scarf off and he's just covered in hickeys. So April is sad, but Jake's an asshole. He plays an asshole in every fucking movie in this time period. And Jessica witnesses all of this. So now like Jake is on her radar. She goes, applies for the job as Spence, the janitorial job as Spence, gets fingerprinted and is waiting to hear back. And then another completely confusing scene. Billy is shitting (laughs) in the bathroom. (sighs) And Jessica peers over the top and it's like, Billy. And he's like, <laughs> what the actual fuck? Why is this man watching me shit? It's giving child predator. Yeah. Uh, also, how do you, like, I've never seen a school system give anybody a job without the prince coming back first. Yes. Nope. You'd never be in that school without your prince coming back. No. You have to provide a photo ID just to, like, get in the front door. Yeah, it was real suspect. And you have to have a reason to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we get just a quick cutaway scene of Clive as Jessica stealing tampons from a convenience store (laughs) and reading the instructions and being surprised at what you have to do with a tampon. It, you know, I think it's such a disservice in this country that we do not educate properly on bodily functions on both sides. Like, yes, the amount of ignorance both men and women have on their other side parts doesn't make any fucking sense. And at his grown age, to not know how a tampon works is just fucking weird to me. I get, like, understanding the, like, actual act of inserting a tampon. Like, there is some physics and, like, the angles you have to be aware <laughs> of. But to, like, not, like, the I gotta do what? You stick your penis in people. Like, you right. gotta know things go in. Right. Why? So, like, if he... I don't understand why he wouldn't at least know enough to know, okay, I don't, I I don't know how to do tampons. Let me get a pad. Yeah. So now the next scene is Taquito playing basketball with dad. This is where Booger sees Taquito's little three point shot form with his little foot pop. So Booger's (laughs) starting to. It's very Mia after he kisses. Foot pop and kiss. Yes. And then they're sitting on the porch afterwards and and Jessica gets real sentimental and is telling (laughs) dad that he's the best dad in the whole world. And Jessica leans his head on dad's shoulder. And this is where mom sees them from in the kitchen having a moment. Yes. Um, I I believe my husband is wanting (laughs) to be with our gardener and I too (laughs) would like that to happen for myself. Thank you. Yes. I think they're swingers. I think that's what it is. They just need some spice. Anywhere they can find it, they need a spice (laughs) in their sex life. 
And if it's Taquito the gardener, then so <laughs> be it. And then Jessica and April are with Eden and Heisenberg. I keep calling her Heisenberg. That's Heldenberg. Not her name. Heldenberg. They're all together and they're looking at this cult website and they're scrolling through things and, oh, there just so happens to be the earrings. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I'm not mad oh. at this because this literally happened on every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> like, if Let's it just wasn't Google in one, it. Yeah, like if it wasn't in the books, Willow would just pull it up and be like, I found it <laughs> on this random website. <laughs> so they're like, oh, the earrings. They go back to the shop. The shopkeeper explains to them how you have to reunite the earrings to reverse the curse. Or you'll get stuck that way at, yes. by the full moon of the next night. So that they're was on a, a bummer. They're on a deadline now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have to find Clive and Jessica's body, which now they're like, shit, we have no idea where the fuck they could be. Yes. And now it's after football practice, Billy and Jake are in the, sh in the locker room. Taquito, not Taquito, Spence, 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 Spence yes. <laughs> is cleaning the locker room and kind of listening to their conversation. And Jake's like, oh, essentially April's my side chick. I got a new chick. You should have more than one girl, blah, blah, blah. And Billy was like, no, it like Jessica's it for me. So Billy sees something in Jessica the whole world does not see. <laughs> he loves him some Jessica. I saw on the news the other day that the love hormone hormone for men is not released during sex like it is for women. It's actually released after extreme stress. Ah. So this boy what... was under stress this entire <laughs> movie. So women, if you feel like you're trying to like love up on a man and be sweet. No, show him absolute duress and he will love you for the rest of your fucking life. It's actually stress and food. So there is kind of a correlation with the fact that the, the keto man's heart is through his stomach. So feed that bitch, but make his life fucking hell <laughs> and he'll love you for the rest of your life. Good, good tip. <laughs> <laughs> solid, solid advice. So as Spence is listening to this, he's getting a little weepy. And then the guys notice. And Spence's <laughs> response is, somebody shit in the lock. It's about this time the mugshot for Clive comes through and is on the fax machine. And then we transition to Jessica's house and mom finds Taquito. Offers him the food of his people. So she automatically assumes that he's Mexican. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And just like, okay. And her tits are fully out. Her blouse is like two buttons <laughs> unbuttoned. <laughs> Boobs and bra are fully on display. Mom knew what she was doing. She uh -huh. had a plan. Yeah, and then she, like, tries to attack her daughter, Taquito slash Jessica. Like, she she really tried to dive over the enchiladas. Yes, yeah. To, like, like, over the table. And Taquito slash Jessica is fighting for their life right now. Yes. <laughs> and to try not to make out with their mother. And um, then finally mom's like oh you like men like you didn't gather that from yeah. the quaint moment your husband had with taquito earlier make it make sense but then taquito suggests painting her toenails and washing her hair late and mom's like oh my daughter jesse used to do that with me when i when she was younger what is this trope that for so like i think straight men think that straight women are a hundred percent just totally okay with getting us getting naked with gay men as like this is a thing that we do to yeah. hang out and i'm just like first of all that's assuming a lot like 
my gay guy friends don't want to see my ass naked and rub me down in the bathtub like what the fuck is happening in this scene it went from painting toenails and washing hair which i would assume washing hair is like washing it in the sink right right instead she's full-on in the bath and he's scrubbing her back and when his dad walks bath. in, his yeah. feet are in the bathtub. Yeah. It's so <laughs> fucking weird. And I love where dad finds them. Like, Taquito's like, oh, no, <laughs> the scrubbing, the scrub. Like, he just keeps saying the scrubbing, which I find fucking hilarious because he's just holding a little loop of brush. <laughs> and then, like, as soon as Taquito is, like, out of the room, dad's like... Come here, baby. That was the spark we needed was yeah. <laughs> Taquito's feet in the bathtub with mom. <laughs> Danielle, your eyebrows are dancing. Oh. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, that whole thing uh, took me out. Yeah. Sheer chaos. This is the point where Jessica starts to realize she took everyone for granted, realizes that she was kind of an asshole. <laughs> i.e. the biggest asshole she's reflecting Um, she's having some reflection time for sure (laughs) yes so then she starts trying to really right some wrongs she's at april's jake calls and so she answers the phone as spence and is like hey she's with me now and stuff and so (laughs) but you can really see april start to have a crush on spence at this point and they (laughs) decide to go to prom together to make Jake jealous, but really April's like, in her <laughs> mind, she's like, I just want to go with you, <laughs> yes. Spence slash Jessica slash Taquito. And then we see Billy, he's just very upset. And so he's just driving <laughs> around in his dad's Pontiac <laughs> crying. And he sees live in Jessica's <laughs> body looking haggard. Like it seemed like it had been raining, but there was no rain. So I don't yeah. know why she was all wet. So with it's- the one earring in. Yes. <laughs> and so Billy pulls over. He's like, what the fuck's going on? I'll do anything for you. And so Clive is Jessica is like, how much money do you got? Give me the keys to your car. And this fucking idiot says, okay. Yeah. He doesn't say get in the car. I'm taking you home. Like, yeah. it's yeah. just like, okay. I'm not asking any. Qu-. It was so fucking weird. And so the next day when they're at the, the pep rally or cheer competition, cheer competition yeah. he looks so, he's in distress. Again, releasing that love hormone. He's like thinking it's over between him and Jessica. But then they hide, they hide Jessica, who is in Clive's body, <laughs> in the mascot outfit. So he thinks he sees Jessica, but he's still conflicted because this bitch fucking robbed him and she does the hand motions or whatever. And they do this shitty number. They were no Toros or Clovers. <laughs> no. But then Jessica's, what is she, a bee? She's yes. a bee. She's a honeybee. She got a with big, boobs. a whopping ass for her stinger. <laughs> like hitting everybody but her head helmet thing falls off and is exposed as the fucking janitor (laughs) and billy pukes in jake's lap (laughs) i don't know okay and that part is weird because like why are you you don't why are you throwing up it's not like yeah you didn't do anything Yeah. yeah And that's you and Jessica's secret handshake thing. So, like, why aren't you concerned that... about where the fuck Jessica is? Yeah. yeah. Booger caught on. Right. Catch up, Billy. <laughs> Billy's not the brightest. <laughs> he is not. Not at all. And then we see Bianca talking to Billy. So, somehow they end up going to Bianca prom just, together. She, she scooped him up real quick. She's like, oh, you're in duress. I can give you more stress too. (laughs) (laughs) And then Hildenberg is at home watching TV, eating a Sammy again, because she can't just be chilling. Chilling. Right. And she sees a news article about the hot chick bandit who are, who is seducing men and robbing them. Well, yeah, she sees it on the TV and she sees Jessica. Yes. While Jessica's body. Because 
the guy that got beat up <laughs> somehow his friend was recording him so they got really good footage of it they were recording because like let's not overlook that these two men were predators yes and got so she conned them to get into the alley they thought they were about to get girls gone wild sex tape situations <laughs> And she walloped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and his friend fucking still videotaped it, but tried to stay out of the way because he didn't want to get his ass beat. And gave it to the media. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jessica's now the most, America's most wanted out in these streets. <laughs> we have to give it up to Rachel McAdams. Like, she did such a fucking good job she playing did. this role. Mm -hmm. She's only in the movie a very small amount of time as Clive. And she still makes you believe that, yes, that is a man in her body. Like, you don't mm -hmm. even question it because she does such a good job at it. Well, the audition process took three months because they were searching for the perfect Jessica and according to the director, only Rachel, who was one of the last to audition, could pull off both Jessica and Jessica as Clive. So that's why she was cast. Yeah, but she had, she was in the U.S. because she's Canadian. So she was in the U.S. to audition. It says Nancy McDrew, but I'm guessing <laughs> that, that they met Nancy Drew. Um, it was the Scottish <laughs> version of the Nancy Drew series. <laughs> She obviously didn't get that role in the series, but was able to audition. And Malin Ackerman actually auditioned for the role of Jessica as well. I could have seen her doing that role too. Hot, hot take. I can't stand her. Oh. She is in some of my most beloved movies. Like the what? Proposal, 27 Dresses. I can't stand her. You know what? I don't think I had a feeling about her either way, but I did like that TV show that got canceled called Trophy Wife that she was in. And it made me actually have a little bit of an affinity to her. But when she was the horrible sister in 27 Dresses, I wanted hmm. to like beat the <laughs> shit out of her. Just like Amy Adams in Wedding Date. Just awful. I still, no, I can never hate her. I love her so much. No. She was an awful human being. Yeah. So Jessica gets home and her prom dress is laid out and she gets very sad and puts it on, even <laughs> though she got man bod. And Booger comes in and he's like, like, I know it's you and kind of like consoles her. And, and she's like, why are you being so nice to me? He's like, you've always accepted me as who, for who I am. So I can accept you for who you are, Aww. Rob Schneider. Little baby guy. <laughs> Little baby guy. <laughs> if Serena came to me as Rob Schneider, I would love her still, but I would fight all the demons in hell to get her back into her body. <laughs> <laughs> you would turn into Buffy? I would. There's no way. <laughs> Ain't no way! So now we're at the prom. Ling has a conversation about with her mom. This is where there is a lot of inappropriate word usage that happens. I want to know how this fucking line got by Tia and Tamara to their fucking face. Like, yeah. was this what, like, the only way I think this is okay is that they said it like, like they filmed the scene with without them really being there because you yeah. don't see them, like, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I just want to know, if I ever get to interview them, that's one of my questions. Like, how the fuck did y'all, were like, were you surprised when you saw the screening of the movie and yeah. then, like, what the fuck? Like, I want to know. Or were you just like, oh, it's totally fine. And, like, the mom is culturally appropriating her it, whole outfit like it's just it's all around she's wearing a velour like tracksuit big bamboo earrings she's in a fucking hat like the whole thing a low rider car it's yeah. just not it's weird and like the because then the message gets tainted because the message she's trying to relay to Ling Ling is like 
I am who I am. I'm not changing. Like, you're not ashamed of me. You're not embarrassed of me. You're embarrassed of like that part of yourself. And that's what you need to like. It would have been nice if her dad, like her black father was around and she was trying to be closer to her dad. It was just, yeah, it was super weird. Ugh. And I don't like, I, I, I think the way that her mother acted made it seem like I would be embarrassed by that too, because yeah, you are being a culture vulture and just very embarrassing. She was embarrassing. It wasn't, it had yes. to do with. Mm-hmm. The culture part of it, she was embarrassing because she was just like over the top for no she would reason. Show up, yeah. She would like interrupt things, yeah. Like nobody other, no one else's parents were coming and rolling up to school like that. So yeah. the message just was didn't make any sense. Like it yeah. would be interesting if she, sh- the Asian girls were walking by and she like tried to ignore them, or they would call her out and say that she was Asian. She's like, I'm not Asian. Like something mm-hmm. to yeah. that effect. But she wasn't. And then she, when they graduate, she is in a, like, traditional Korean dress. So, like, Mm -hmm. caricature all the way over to the other side saying, and then saying she's proud to be Korean and Black. Like, it was just, oh, I know. (laughs) It's so frustrating. I would like to know, like, how Asian people felt about this representation in this movie because I know as a black person I was just like not here for any of it very annoying agreed so they cut away to Hildenberg who is at the scene of the crime in little gloves (laughs) (laughs) yeah I thought it was precious I thought it was funny because she was like rushing to get there as if the girl was still going to be there so I was confused and if they reported on it the cops would have already been to that scene mm-hmm. by now. So yeah. how did the cops leave that evidence? So, yeah, she finds a matchbook that has the Polecat Club on it. So she knows where to go to find Clive as Jessica. <laughs> this shit's so, confusing. Do you think that this strip club is also owned by the same owners of the Kitty Cat Club I think so. I, from... I think it lives in the same universe. <laughs> I fully believe dude where's my car and hot chick live in the same universe. <laughs> it only makes sense. 100%. And then we oh, miss uh, prom. They're at prom, right? Yes. And yeah. so Clive, who is really Jessica, goes with April as her mm-hmm. date and they make April's ex-boyfriend, Jake very jealous and he is accompanied by ashley simpson who has like one word said it's hard because i know that's ashley simpson but (laughs) she looks so different now that i'm like oh that was ashley simpson's (laughs) old face (laughs) (laughs) she does look very different i don't want to say young and dewy she just looks different 100 yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. but i'm not there's no stand on ashley simpson here because i'd be i love the fuck out of me some ashley simpson <laughs> i do i do you can't tell me nothing about those first two albums <laughs> not a damn thing so yes they kiss to make jake jealous and then april's like wait a minute and goes back in for seconds and thirds and <laughs> tells Jessica in Clive's body, Spence, I love you. <laughs> and Jessica is like, well, I love Billy. Like, she lets her down easy, but it's mm-hmm. still like... It's not clicking. Yeah. And, and she's like, I'm going to make Billy accept me for who I am as a man. <laughs> is our new plan. I don't mean to laugh at that. I It's just the way that... He didn't even try, she didn't try to sit down with Billy about what's going on. She is just literally trying to push him into an uncomfortable situation because he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, he Mm -hmm. just thinks this grown-ass 40-year-old man is obsessed with him. Yeah. So, also, side note, well, so Hildenberg comes into prom and she's like, I know where to go. We need to GTFO. I'll distract the cops with some of my dancing, apparently. Wait, 
We talk about the twister dress yet? Yeah. Did we? Oh no, no the yet? twister dress was at the instant, instant tang. tang. <laughs> right hand, red. right hand, red. <laughs> and then he goes left hand blue and grabs her other <laughs> ass cheek. Sorry. I enjoy that very much. <laughs> yeah. So, can we just spend a mere moment on? I call her her Elizabeth because she played Elizabeth on Friends, the redheaded Friends hairdo at prom <laughs> what was that i don't know did don't we know. think that looked good it was like she lived in dallas and the higher the hair <laughs> the closer to god yeah not sure it was yeah, not I don't know where stellar. they were going with that and then she jessica goes to try to talk to billy and bianca's like he's mine and here comes Spence with the I don't think so headbutt. <laughs> and just, Bianca goes fucking flying for the second time. This and But she, what I don't understand is why Bianca would feel it necessary to say this to this janitor man. A man. Like, yeah. Why did she feel territorial? Like, I thought that was weird. Yeah. I feel like we have more questions leaving this episode than we did coming in <laughs> so she does tell Bell billy the truth she kisses billy he he's like i don't think i can do this blah 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 but then they're like hey jessica we found your body we need to go to the polecat club at this point billy says to him or to jessica you're a 30 year old man is that the line he said 30 right yes that's not a 30-year-old man. That isn't. I wonder how old Rob Schneider... If it is, woof. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to look at it like this. Rob Schneider was most likely in his 20s when he was on Saturday Night Live, which were, was the early 90s. I think that he probably was 30 by the time this movie came out. Interesting. Uh, he was 30, 39. He is 59 now. This movie is 20 years old. So she, he was 39. He, Wait, he's how old now? 59. Minus 20 is 30. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me and Amber were trying to math. <laughs> Give us a second. Not carry, following. Carry the one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so homeboy gave him a little, gave himself a little like, he's like reduction. I'm, he said, <laughs> bitch, I ain't 40 yet. I'm still in my 30s. I am 30-ish. So now they go to the pole cat club. With the pole cat clack club? Clack clack. <laughs> okay, can someone recap for me how the parents found out where she was? There was a cop car at their house. That's all I know. That's all I know is them going out to the cop car to go get her. Yeah, I, I don't know any information <laughs> further than that. Oh, okay. the brother, didn't the brother say, I think I know where she is. I think he might have seen like the news stories something but he but, how it, he, but hildenberg know. had the the clue yeah, that wouldn't have been on the news i don't know, know but that. the little brother was the one who talked to his parents so i don't know what happened okay maybe they made a call home who knows <laughs> fair enough fair enough okay so then we're at the what is it the pole cat club pole club. yeah Polk. we're at the club and <laughs> Jessica is, or Jessica's body is up dancing. They go in, so they're trying to convince Jessica's body to switch back to Clive's body. She's trying to cut a deal on, can I have it every other weekend so I can pay off gambling debt? <laughs> <laughs> At some point, Jake comes in. Does he come in with Billy? Yes. Okay. So then Jake wants a dance from jessica he realizes jessica's there yeah so once when jessica and clive are like trying to negotiate jessica actually gets the earring and then clive thinks that he's won and he's taken jessica body over to mm -hmm. dance and that's when what's his face comes in he's like oh hell oh, yes yeah, he's, yeah. he spots her and he's like i want to dance from her because he's a creeper the issue arises as he's watching her dance and things start to change in front of him. <laughs> and it starts with the face and it's like this like 
but it's Rob <laughs> Schneider's face. <laughs> and then we see all the things from top to bottom. And then Jessica's just herself again. It's like <laughs> we didn't see any transformation on that end. <laughs> but she's in the big prom suit. And at this point, why are the cops not taking her? Why are they only taking him? Because they don't I know agree. about a body switch. I agree. I'm like, she is still America's most wanted. <laughs> right. She was on the news. Bring I, her in for questioning. I don't know who explained what whatsoever. Yeah. But yeah, the cops somehow take him. <laughs> and just she, let her be. Yeah. Yeah more of april's open mouth acting <laughs> <laughs> i actually thought anna ferris looked very cute in this movie she, she just looks so wholesome and mm -hmm. she hadn't started to get like fillers and all that other stuff in yeah. her yet and her fake boobies yeah yeah so the strip club owner comes up to her right it's the strip club owner yeah he like while she's kissing billy and he's like you need to get back in their own dance, <laughs> right? Not realizing that she's somehow in a suit after being in a pink, right? But the dad calls him out. And he's like, "She's underage, bitch! Like, <laughs> do you really want to fight this?" And and then Clive is in the back of the cop car, and he and April start making winkies at each other. <laughs> Question mark? Yeah, and while everyone's distracted. Clive runs out of the cop car, which is weird because normally cop cars lock Don't from the open end. from the inside. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and then he hightails it out in his heel still, and he gets in the back of a car. He, you know, gets someone to pick him up, and it turns out to be the bartender that kept giving Jessica side eye, side eye. Yeah. And then, but it seems it seems like the bartender gay. Yeah. Um, he he starts playing sexy music and locks the doors and essentially kidnaps Clive. But Clive deserved it. I I just I don't love that. Yeah, I don't love that journey because it's like it, alluding to the fact that he's a rapist because he's a gay man. Mm -hmm. I yeah. was just like not cool with that. Yeah, I mean like. Clive getting kidnapped is what I like about yes. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not any, who was any, the kidnapper. Anything. I don't. Yes. The, mm. <laughs> Men. <laughs> Trying to make comedy. And so that is the hot chick. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the most confusing explanation of characters ever. <laughs> and in addition to this being Ashley Simpson's feature film debut, it was also a branch had a cameo as the DJ. Oh. Mm -hmm. In the first version of the hot chick, more scenes of Jessica as Clive were added, but because of the screening time, some of them were dropped. Which made it sense. feel clunky because it was just like these weird, random, thrown in scenes of what, like. like the Snip bare minute yeah the bare minimum of what was needed to progress clive as jessica's story it was yeah. weird yeah i think getting um, clive's perspective would have thrown things off it would have made it long mm -hmm. and i i think it was fine to trim that fat honestly yeah i think we really needed to focus on jessica's journey anyways and so having her kind of show up in these weird funny things like what is she getting up to into is was kind of funny but I never felt like I wanted to know more about yeah. what Clive was up to because I'm sure it would have been bad oh my god and <laughs> in a blink and, and you'll miss it this was Jenna Dewan's first movie she plays a cheerleader in the opposing team at the cheerleading competition hmm. and the original title of this movie was called Miss Popularity and the filming took place at University High School in West Los Angeles. And finally, Rob Schneider's mother, Pilar Schneider, appeared as one of the cheerleading contest judges. If you have any commentary on what we discussed today on 
the hot chick, <laughs> make sure to hit us up at no more late fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And let's get into the ratings. I'll start with you, Amber. What is today's Amber feel the rating of this movie would be? I think I'm going to bump it down to a five-day rental. Oh. I think it's it's still fun to watch. It's quotable. It's a movie I would put on, like, if I was stuck sick on the couch. But, like, having grown up and, like, seeing more of the nuance to the movie and, like, things that are not quite right, I don't think I would spend my money on it. Jackie? This is hard because I do own it. I mean... <laughs> I would give it a five day, but I, to be true to the rules, <laughs> I have bought it on iTunes. Again, it was probably like a sale item. I did. I certainly did not pay full price for it, but I agree with Amber. There are a lot of problematic elements to it, but it does have a really, a lot of really quotable lines. And I don't laugh out loud at many movies, but I laughed out loud at this movie in certain points. Same. I'm not a Rob Schneider fan at all, but as much, like you said, as much as it's problematic in a lot of ways, it's still a fun, it's a fun movie. I did laugh. I was surprised that I laughed out loud and I didn't have a hard time rewatching it. Like it was actually a fun rewatch. So I, I would give it a five day rental. I still own it, but I didn't rebuy it. So, <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well, if you have any hot takes on the hot chick, hit us up at our quick drop 909 601 6653, 909 601 NMLF. You can twat us at the Twitters or leave a voicemail on our Anchor FM account that's helpful for our international listeners, and you could be featured on a future episode. Well, we just want to wish you guys all a happy holiday. We will be taking a little bit of a break. We learned from last year. No one's listening to the podcast right now. And <laughs> why stress ourselves making a bunch of episodes when we need to take a break? So we'll be back with our end of the year special, just highlighting some of the fun and kooky, crazy things that we got into this year. And... Thank you. Thank you guys all for the support. Thank you for our new fans, fam, that have joined us. And thank you to all of our wonderful guests so far. And we hope everyone has a wonderful break. And as always, be kind and rewind. We out!